Hi friends! Welcome back to another Family Sunday with Delaware Shakespeare. We are so glad that you joined us today. As you might know, this is week number two, and you will see that I have two friends here with me. This is my friend B and my Hello. friend Celia. Hello! And they each have friends with them. Would you please introduce us to your friends? This is Stubbs the Dinosaur. <laughs> he kind of looks like a pickle, but that is okay. <laughs> and this is my friend, Miss Baby Grape, and she's also a dinosaur, and she'll be listening to the story. And you also might see my friend Archie the dog pop into the screen. <laughs> He's big and black and very cuddly. We hope he joins yes. us. <laughs> <laughs> now, before our story, I think we need to warm up and get ready. Celia, would you like to lead us in a little warm-up game? Of course. So, put your hand up in the air. And now, shake, shake, your, shake your arm and hand all the way and take it and put it back down. Onto the ground. Whatever you're sitting on. Now put your other hand up in the air and do the same. Now, my, my brain must work. Brain. Was it our shoulders next? Yes, it was. So, how should we move our shoulders, Celia? My, my, my brain's train of thought just stopped in the middle of the tracks and just flopped off. That's all good. Okay. We'll warm up our bodies warm, and turn warm up. our brains. Do you want to shake our shoulders? Yes. Yeah? Up and down. What do you think about shaking our elbows? Yeah? And what do you think if we shake our heads? Bob them from left to right. And then, wasn't there some sort of food that was boiling, Celia, that we... Oh, yeah. Become a noodle boiling in a pot. Become a noodle, noodle boiling in a pot. Whoa. <laughs> we can be spaghetti or linguine. Ooh, there's an or elbow pasta. Maybe we're elbows. Or tortellini. Tortellini. Or tortellini. I love that. Stuffed with cheese. I'm a tortellini. <laughs> how do you awesome. I wonder how you could do with your body the uh kind of the curly cue pasta you know that's spun around could you be like a curled pasta Ooh. wrap up your arms Ooh, nice <laughs> <laughs> awesome well my body is warm how are we feeling all right so we have a really fun story today now you might before have heard the story, heard of the story Romeo and Juliet, but today we're going to read Romeo Saurus and Juliet Rex. <laughs> so you can see why our friends brought their dinosaur friends today. They wanted to hear the story too. Love it. So this is Romeo Saurus and Juliet Rex by Mo O'Hara, with illustrations by Andrew Joyner. Ready? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes. Ne'er a tale ma made a child laugh more than Juliet Rex and her Romeo sore. <laughs> you know, I really love this illustration. It's a good one, oh, isn't passing. it? Can we see it? <laughs> Celia, what do you love about this illustration? Who does that look like? William Shakespeare. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. William Shakespeare as a dinosaur. How do we know it's William Shakespeare? Because it, it definitely is. 
This is one of his famous plays. That's very true. I also think somehow the mustache makes makes the dino look very Shakespearean. Yes. And the ruff. <laughs> and that collar. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's a giveaway. <laughs> Do you see his tail? <laughs> very silly. All right. Once upon a time, 150 million years ago, two families both alike in lizardness, lived in the swampland of Verona. Romeosaurus's family were herbivores. Yay! Ferns for dinner! Yay! <laughs> Celia, would you help us? What, what do you think herbivores means? Oh, I think I know this one. Um, herbivore means plant, plant, plants. They eat plants. They eat plants. Yes. Yay. So Romeosaurus's family are plant eaters. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're having a dinner of ferns, and look how happy they are about it. They look very happy. They look very, <laughs> very happy. Juliet very happy. Rex's family were carnivores. Celia, could you help us with that big word? Carn so carnivore means like they eat meat. They're meat eaters, they meat -eaters. and they're saying, "Yay, herbivores for dinner! Yay!" Uh oh, <laughs> the herbivores don't look so happy in this picture. They they look quite frightened. Honestly. <laughs> Julia Rex's family looks very happy, though. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> They're hungry. You can see why the two families didn't really get along. Oh, I can see. <laughs> I can see one of the family members in the background of the first. Yeah. The first mm -hmm. picture is hiding in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that family hiding in a tree? So, Do that they don't, so that they don't get eaten by Juliet Rex's family. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's very true. <clears throat> now, one day, Juliet Rex was stomping through the swampland on her way to the dinosaur ball. How do you think she might be stomping? B, what do you think? I think she's stomping almost like she's getting ready to dance. So it's a very Ooh. steady stomp. It's like, she's dunk, doing one of these. Dunk, dunk. Dunk, dunk, right, Celia? Dunk, 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 dunk. And she's going, do my arms look small in this? <laughs> Did she ask that of Cassie? Her nursodactyl. <laughs> and her nursodactyl answered, of course, my dear. <laughs> Because if you're a T-Rex, you want your arms to look very small and dainty. They can stomp along and be very strong and have very dainty arms. <laughs> She's got these cute little dainty arms. Like stubs. Oh, like stubs. Like stubs. Stubs have little dainty <laughs> or like, arms. Or like baby crepe with her short arms. <laughs> very dainty. Very dinosaur-like. <laughs> Meanwhile... Oh, like <laughs> Meanwhile, Romeosaurus was clomping along with his friend Mercutio Tops on his way to crash the ball. How do we think an herbivore might clump? Hmm. Say, so, do you know what a stegosaurus looks like? What its body and its tail look like? Yes. I've seen many supposedly pictures of <laughs> yeah so they've got giant, giant hands so maybe maybe should we swish and clomp yeah. swish and clomp like a stegosaurus would through the forest and it's just crashing into everything around it <laughs> <laughs> nice Cassie I love it now, usually, when, when a stegosaurus and a triceratops crash a ball, you would know it. But this time, they went in disguise. 
because it was a masked ball for carnivores only. Look at their silly masks here. Yeah, I can't tell that that's Romeosaurus and Mercutio tops at all with their masks. No, no. They're, in very, <laughs> they're in very good disguises, aren't they? The carnivores really knew how to throw a party. And Juliet Rex was waving her tiny arms in the air like she just didn't care. How do you think that might look, Celia? Yeah, tiny arms in the air. I love it. Like Shut she it. just didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> this also looks like a very fun party. It looks like a really fun party. She was waving her tiny arms in the air like she just didn't care when she spotted a dinosaur she had never seen before. Can you see the fun dance party there? Looks very fun indeed. Celia, <laughs> can you spot Juliet Rex? What is she wearing? I. It looks like she's wearing a very nice dress. She looks okay. a very nice dress. It's red and yellow. And of course, it makes her arms look very dainty. And design. <laughs> Much, many designs. <laughs> now, Juliet Rex had spotted a dinosaur she had never seen before. He swished his tail to say hello to her. She thumped her tail back to say, I might be, oh, I'm sorry, this is B. No, it's okay. I might be casually waving hi, or I might be just swatting a prehistoric bug. Your call. <laughs> hey, Celia, how might you casually wave hi with T-Rex arms? Can you show us? Why don't we all wave casually with T-Rex arms? Even and then, how might you swat a prehistoric bug? Everyone swat a prehistoric bug. Ready? Go. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so fun. Romeosaurus went over and the two dinos danced. They giggled, they talked, they played, and they started to become friends. Do you want to get something to eat? <laughs> Juliet Rats asked as she led Romeosaurus over to the buffet. Auntie Gladys! Romeosaurus gulped. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. What's happening to Auntie Gladys, Celia? Uh, looks like she's gonna get eaten by some. by some. carnivores. <laughs> oh. I, just, I just lost my train of thought there. <laughs> Do you see this oh, tiny my carnivore right here? <laughs> it looks like he's gonna plate and everything and he's just ready. Mm hmm. Just ready to eat. I this know it looks, looks like, like Juliet's family got Auntie Gladys as a main course at the party. Oh no. oh no, let's see what happens next. Romeosaurus rushed to help Auntie Gladys off the buffet table and take the apple out of her mouth. Wait, you're a herbivore? Juliet asked, taking off Romeosaurus's mask. And you're a carnivore? They look surprised, don't they? They do. It wasn't They're very getting good along mask. so great. Just then, a fight broke out at the dinosaur ball. Apparently, Mercutio Tops had poked Juliet Rex's cousin, Tybalt Rex, with his horns while dancing. Oh no. Oh no. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> that does kind of sound like it would have hurt. Kind of does. Especially for Triceratops. You better go, Juliet Rex said, sneaking Romeosaurus out during the commotion. Will I see you again? Then what did Romeosaurus do? He looked back and smiled. And smiled. <laughs> so yes, maybe I think she will. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think she'll see him again, Celia? Yes. 
I also think that this is Tybalt Rex's tail, don't you? Oh, yeah. Please. Oh. It does look like it. I think it might be. <laughs> I think he got mad when Mercutio Tops poked him. Seems like he did. That <laughs> night, Juliet Rex looked out from her cliff-top balcony. Romeosaurus! Romeosaurus! Wherefore art thou, Romeosaurus? <laughs> She looks so, so hopeful there. She does. She, she does. On her viney balcony. <laughs> what do you think, Celia? Do you think Romeosaurus is going to come? Yes. I do. <laughs> it looks so hopeful that I feel like it's true. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Wait. I just noticed something about the plants. Mm -hmm. What did you Even know? the plants are carnivores. <gasps> are they Venus flytraps? Oh, you're right. Some of them look like Venus flytraps. Oh, what they're just like good... they can eat bugs. Can you see them yeah, right they, there? Yeah, they just, they're just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good eye, Celia. I did not spot that. That's great. No, yeah. I literally just noticed that. If I were Romeosaurus, I would be so scared to go into Juliet's, you know, like her area, her family's house, because mm -hmm. if there especially, were Venus, especially if there's plants there like that, yeah. it looks like that would kind of hurt. It looks like it might. It looks like it might. <laughs> so Juliet is standing on her balcony, wishing that her friend would come, and all of a sudden, what does she hear? Down here, Romeo said. <laughs> Stegosauruses aren't very good at climbing. It's the tail, really, and the weight, and the complete lack of claws to grip anything. And <laughs> there's, a, there's a stone ramp over there, Juliet Rex interrupted. <gasps> okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think happened next? What do you think he did? I think he probably went up the ramp. <laughs> For sure. But also, I love how in like every single comedy book and movie that happens. Like they're explaining <laughs> something and they're like, uh, the entrance is right over there. <laughs> I know. So funny. Um, we're we're going to have to go in through, through, through the, the vents door. and then go down over the wire. <laughs> There's an entrance right over there. <laughs> A very good joke just doesn't get old. Mm -mm. Once again, they giggled and played and talked and laughed, and they became true friends. Oh. What Yay! Celia, what games do you think they were playing? Mm, it looks like they were playing chess or mm -hmm. checkers. And maybe oh. reading a book together? Yeah. Reading a book with friends is always a good thing to do. Wait, hold on. I wonder what book, wait. I wonder what book that is. It doesn't have words on the cover, but what if it said Romeo, what if it says Romeo and Juliet in squiggle language? That would be genius. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I bet that's Inception. what they were reading. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet exception. <laughs> layers and layers, I love it. All right. Oh. Do they, something's happening. They're having a really important discussion, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, we start with uh, Juliet Rex here at this one. Oh, yeah. They look like they're kind of sad. Yeah. Well, let's listen to what they're saying. My family would never want me to be friends with you, Juliet Rex said. I mean, I can never invite you over for dinner. You would be the main course. Oh, no. My family wouldn't like it either. Especially Aunt Gladys, Romeo Sora said, sighing. Definitely Aunt Gladys. I know. Aunt Gladys wouldn't like that at all because of her previous, her previous trauma. Right? Then what can we do? Juliet Rex wondered. I wonder what can they do? When Nurse Adactyl woke the next morning, she found that Juliet Rex's bed had not been slept in, 
and she found a note. A herbivore is my true friend. Off I go to swamp lands end. That doesn't sound good. It does not sound good at all. Look, she has a dinosaur plushie on her bed. <laughs> also, that bed looks very comfortable indeed. It looks very comfortable indeed. You're right. Also, look, a personalized pillow. Baby Grape, you hear that? You have a guest appearance in Nurse Dactyl's bedroom. <laughs> she was hanging out. <laughs> Just chilling on the bed there. Just chilling. That's all over. <laughs> That's why we needed our plushy friends. <laughs> Nurse Adactyl flew down to the herbivore's home and tapped her talon on the door. Auntie Gladys answered. Oh no. <laughs> Auntie Gladys screamed and then fainted. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Mercutio Tops pulled Auntie Gladys out of the way. Nurse Adactyl showed him Juliet Rex's note, and he showed her the note Romeosaurus had left for him. You have always been a friend to me, but a carnivore has set my heart free. I don't think this sounds very good. <laughs> mm, Nurse Adactyl made a face. They're not very good at poetry, but they do seem to care a lot about each other, even though they're different. Ooh. Uh, we have bad poetry in common, I guess. The Crucio <laughs> Caps had it. Apparently, they mm -hmm. cannot do poetry. No way. We need to find them. They're headed for the tar pits, and that's dangerous for any dinosaur, herbivore, or carnivore. Nurse Adactyl flapped her wing <gasps> and, and carried carry. Mercutio tops above, above the swampland until they reached the tar pits. They could see some things floating in the tar. It was Romeo Saurus's feathered hat and Juliet Rex's backpack. Oh no. This doesn't seem good at all. Mm -mm. In fact, it seems really, really bad. We're too late, shrieked Nurse Adactyl. We should have let them be friends, Mercutio Tops cried. You're right, you're right, Nurse Adactyl sobbed. Then maybe. They'd both still be here. But we are here, Juliet Rex said. And she and Romeo Soros came out from behind a boulder. Hooray! Yay! Oh, they look very much all right. Oh. My little dino! Nurse and Dactyl gathered Juliet Rex in for a wingy hug. <laughs> Mercutio Top Splutter. But your hat, your, your, the backpack. Uh, we were just looking for a, a big stick to fish them out with when you both showed up, Romeo Soros said. <laughs> so, can we? Just be friends, Juliet asked. Uh, and just to be clear, carnivore friends don't eat other friends, right? Romeo Soros added. I could never eat a true friend of my darling Juliet Rex, Nurse Adactyl said. Then she whispered to Romeo Soros, but if you break her heart, you're in a sandwich by lunchtime, you got it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, it's a deal. Carnivores and herbivores will be friends, Mercutio Top said. Yay! And 
They all shook hands on it. Well, except for Juliet Rex, as hers wouldn't reach, but she nodded in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> and they lived happily ever after. Yeah! Yay! I, 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 I noticed a, a, a dinosaur and an egg. <gasps> Where? Look at that cute little dinosaur. Did it just hatch? Do you think he just hatched? Maybe. If it's still on egg. A very new baby. They lived happily ever after until... <gasps> the meteor came. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I have another dinosaur friend, by the way, that I just remembered was Another here. one? Let's see. Her. Them. The fingerling. So scary. Hold on. You can do this, I think. I think that might Hold have on. been Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Would you do the thing that I want you to do, please? Can you calm down? No, Celia, I can't calm down. <laughs> also, you can, apparently you can make, I, I just remember that you can make fingerlings fart, and when you make him, and when you make him fart, he just blinks like, nope, nothing ever happened. <laughs> this is the funniest one that I have. He's Besides so the funny. Reason, the purple. Dinosaurs. Thank you for sharing your dinosaurs with us. Yes, thank and you. What, what did happen in that last page? What happened to all the dinosaurs? Oh, no. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is, um, basically the meteor was just like, hi, I'm here to come down on Earth and do whatever the heck I want. So just crashed down onto Earth and... Wiped out the dinosaurs. Wiped out the dinosaurs. They all went extinct. I just saw this illustration on the back of the book. William Shakespeare, the dinosaur, doesn't oh, no! look as clean as he did. Oh, no! Yeah. He's, He's a little just, He just got singed a little bit. He's fine. Yeah, just a little meteor fire there. <laughs> so, in thinking about um, this, this story we just read, um... What are some foods that you both like to eat? And at home, what do all of you like to eat? What are some of your favorite foods, you would say? Ooh. I love scrambled <laughs> eggs. I like to eat breakfast at dinner time, and I like scrambled eggs. I love doing that, too. <laughs> it's the best. And Celia, what, what might be one of your favorite foods, if you had to pick? Mm. If I had to pick, I would say the chicken bake that I make. You make a chicken bake? Yeah, chicken oh. bake is chicken bake is basically just chicken pot pie without the carrots. Yum. So what are some of the other ingredients? You said chicken. What else is in there? So chicken, garlic, no, onion, not garlic, onion. I have to remember that. Onion has a much less intense flavor than garlic. That's true. And the trick about the onion is that you have to saute it because you have to saute the chicken with everything else and like with the corn and stuff, but you also saute it with the onions. Mm -hmm. And if you saute the onions enough that they get like clear, but after going like transparent, like a little bit transparent, like just after they go foggy, they, they like start going even more translucent, but they start going brown as well. That's when they're, that's when you know that they're ready. Oh and my that, gosh. And that gives them the sweetest taste. Celia, I want to try that chicken bake one day. Mm -hmm. Who do you like to share food with? If you were to make this chicken bake, who, who do you like to eat with? I like, I like to eat with my family. And also if I'm eating like, um, if I'm eating out in my, um, living room. I like to eat with my cat. Oh, unless I 
Unless I'm eating the chicken bake because he really loves chicken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he like whenever we get seasons, <laughs> he will literally go onto the table and do whatever it takes to try and get a bite of one of my chicken fingers. That's one sneaky kitty. Sounds like a smart kitty cat. Mm -hmm. He is a very smart cat. Also almost 100 years old. Whoa. In cat years. I think he actually is 100 years old in cat years. So he's really been able to decide on what his favorite foods are. And obviously chicken tender is, is up there. Chicken is yummy. way up there. But the thing that's most up there is tuna. tuna. If we're not feeding him the normal food that we feed him, he loves tuna. Mm. I love tuna, too. I love tuna in pasta. I love tuna in sandwiches. Yes. Cassie, do you I, I, like tuna? I really do. I yeah. really yeah, I, do. I like to put tuna in salads, like with spinach or some, some good greens. Yeah, the, my favorite fish, honestly, I, I've tried I've tried one kind of white fish, which I don't forget what it was called, but it's really good. So it and sounds like you like fish, you like meat. Salmon. Salmon, so good. I eat that with my rice pilaf all the time, and it's so good. <laughs> sounds good. For those of you at home, think about what are your awesome foods that you want to share with with your family and with your friends. Mm -hmm. And I know that I have a lot of friends who are herbivores. A lot of my friends don't eat meat and they're vegetarian. I am a carnivore and I love to eat meat. So I'm a pescatarian. (laughs) And you're a pescatarian, you like fish. So the only meat that I eat. (laughs) When you have when you have shared meals with your family and friends who might not like the same foods as you, what, what do you do? If you can, you, you try to make it vegetarian. That's true. Or pescatarian or whatever. I also love Vegan. eating a meal with, with friends who like things that I don't like because that means they'll help me clean my plate. Yeah. I always try to make sure that there's tons of different choices for everyone mm-hmm. so that everyone gets a little a little taste of everything. That sounds lovely. Thank you both for joining me today. This was so much fun to read the story together. And thank you, friends at home, for joining us. We hope you had a really good time. And remember to go to the Delaware Shakespeare website. You can print out some coloring pages that go along with this story. Have a really lovely week, and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye.